Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I like the theme of wildlife, actually. And, you know, you think about if you want to have a really wild life, I think you want to have really wild friends. <laughs> because, you know, I, if, uh, my friend here, Jeff Krasno, who's the guy that really came up with the concept of, hey, li we already have these music festivals going, so why don't we bring in the yoga community as a little auxiliary I don't know if they thought about the idea that we then play music and party till two in the morning and then get up for meditation at six. <laughs> Something about the schedule is kind of messed up, but we're working on it. But <clears throat> it's so cool to, uh, is that? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's so cool though that we all get together with, to me, it's a wild merry band. And what happens when you put a wild merry band together is you have a, a real pot, a real chemistry of tremendously new, innovative juices that are stirring. Like everybody that you meet, the, even the last uh, day or so, haven't you met some really interesting characters? <laughs> and <clears throat> these are artists, and they're also people that are very deep in their thought. They're, uh, they love what they do oftentimes in their life and they love it to share with others. The diversity that I found even in the last 24 hours of being here is just so tremendous. You have a variety, a wild variety of people from all over the United States who, you know, fundamentally they'll say, I, you know, I came from the music maybe, and now I'm trying yoga or I'm trying this style of yoga. But through a universal base of music, we've come together and are able to share our ideas. We're able to share our inspirational, creative juices with each other, and that makes a really fun, wild life. And so, yeah, I, I think I've always endeavored to have a really fun and joyful life to celebrate spirit, and uh, I've done it in large part, I'd say, the greatest joys and the greatest experiences have all come from relationship. You know, they've come through community. Um, and so I just love being with people, you know, and it's so wonderful about festivals and Caitlin and Yoga Journal, I've been associated with them for 25 years. And the great thing about the Yoga Journal too, in many regards, especially with the conferences, is we get to, you bring any possible style together of yoga and you put them together all in the same area. Now, before you have the conferences, typically one style will, will you know, talk about another style. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the styles, of course, the way I always look at it in the highest way is each style gets enthusiastic about their own little studio and their own teachers. And they get, you know, abundantly uh, uh, promoting in their enthusiasm, but it can also just, you know, oftentimes rub against somebody else who's enthusiastic about their style. But when you put it together in a conference, a lot of those differences dissolve and people start to look at what's the common, what's the common thing we all want? Forget the names of what these styles are. Forget uh, you know, what kind of music you like or whatever your reason of being here. Everybody that you're gonna meet here at this conference wants to be happy. Everybody wants to live a life that's rich and fun and full of love. I mean, that's, that's everybody's general purpose. And if we can come through, if it comes through a universal thing like music, fantastic. And if it comes through yoga, it doesn't matter the style. And it's cool to get all the styles together. And when we unite, I was just thinking, I was just talking to somebody that was um, dealing with clothing and it was really kind of uh, specialized, a special type of organic cotton with these certain dyes and it's made in a certain way under the certain moon phase. <laughs> okay, and <clears throat> I think it's fantastic, you know, but uh, because it's one little field, the shirt costs a hundred dollars, you know. Now, the, the people that are here, we're buying that, but we are still like, we're literally in the bigger scope of the society, you know, we're a little bit still a small little band, you know. But the cool thing is, when all of that little band that we are, which is made up of all these little colors and styles and everything, we come together, we become a force. And then everybody pitching in and working together like that, we start to influence the full spectrum of the whole society. 
You use a, pl uh, a context like this, a platform like a wanderlust, a village of like Anusara, you start to shift the energy and the mindset that goes way beyond Little Squaw Valley, California. So that's where I'm excited about, and um, that's why I came. And I wanted just to see how it was, and I was thrilled to hear what uh, Jeff and DK, DK is the guy that I put in charge of making Village on Usara, and they just did an incredible job. And what they did was, they did it out of a spirit of unity, and looking for beauty and diversity, and looking for goodness, and making an expression of, that would glorify life, not like a style like Anusara or whatever. I don't, I don't really even care about that. Whatever the name is on the, on the gate, I don't care. Does, when someone's there, are you open to see the glory? Can you see the beauty that reminds you of something bigger than yourself? That's powerful. And the music, if you hear the music and you, you open yourself and you dance freely with your little wild merry band of friends, isn't that the best? You think, wasn't that a great time? You share the joy with somebody, and that's called love. That's the beginning. <laughs> Caitlin or whomever, do we uh, have questions? Yeah, you can just take them. All right. Yeah. Questions. Questions? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. So I am so touched by how you, you started the movement in, a, in Anisara, right? Yes. And you, what advice would you give? in how you were able to expand yourself and bring the community together in a bigger way. All right, that's sweet. So the question is like, how do you, how'd you do that basically, put this big community together? You know, and I, it's kind of interesting uh, because I've been getting interviewed a lot. You know, we had the New York Times interview recently and they want to know like, how did you, you know, what kind of idea did you do to make this empire? <laughs> So first of all, let me say that, you know, it's so interesting is 13 years ago when I wrote the mission statement, I never thought, let's have this big community. I never thought of like quantity. From when I was a kid, the first thing is, you just want to have, you want to have a few close friends that you trust. People that see life the same way you do, that you can see the good and the beauty in it. You just want to hang out with the small thing. And I, like for me, when I started teaching yoga, it's 30 years now. Um, it, the numbers of students, it didn't matter at all. If I have one student that shows up for class, it's totally a blessing. It's like I get to express what I love that I've been practicing since I was a boy. And you share with that. And you know what happens? You just touch one person's heart and they go out of the room and by just natural, you don't have to say anything. They go, do you see the beauty? Look at the sky. Do you smell the, do you smell the air? Taste this. And that shifts that person, and then it spreads. And then they say, hey, who who's looking for the good? Hey, sh he was looking for the good. Hey, I want to hang out with you. All right, come on. <laughs> hey, let's go over and look out for the good with them. And then all of a sudden, we have a bunch of people. Hey, it's so nice that you join. This is a lot of people. And then you have to, it's like, I want to take care of people. You know, I remember uh, one time I was teaching, uh, groom I had me get up spontaneously, and it was like 1,000 people in the hall. And, you know, the first time, if you, I don't know if you've ever talked to a big group, but, and I have been, I, I've had the privilege of speaking in front of the public since I was a kid, but a thousand people, I mean, my, I had no saliva. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's like total cotton mouth. I can't talk at all. <laughs> you know, and she's asking, John, talk about the Shishumna and the other is where the chakras go through. I don't know anything. You know? Um, and I started, then I tried to get my composure, and I'm thinking about how do I look, you know, with this small, this small group in front of me, what do you think about me? And then um, later she pulled me aside and said, did you consider the people in the back of the hall? And I thought, grew my eyes, a thousand people. Like, are you kidding? Nobody could worry about the people in the back of the hall. She said, no, John, the thing is, is that it doesn't matter the numbers, if you have the intent to just, you share your desire to serve. You make sure that you want everybody in your house, in the room, to be taken care of. That's gonna spread out. You, you don't think about yourself. Don't, just think about serving others. And that, that really shifted my world after that because then it's just, that's it. You just wanna help. If you want to be with people, just do one person at a time. 
And you know what? If it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, it's God's grace. You know, it does, it's cool. So that it's grown, the, the things when you have the numbers, it gives you responsibility. Now you have a big, we all have a dharma, depending on who you, know, you have in your little merry band, you have a dharma to, to show the light, to speak the light. You have, you have a dharma to, to remember the highest. And then when you do that, it will spread and the light will spread. So, you know, you're always going to get, um, you'll look at the outside, like, and I think it's natural. Like, if you're in a big group, you think, how can anybody connect to a big group? Because you don't have maybe all of that physical touch. But energetically, if you desire that your, your community, even your neighborhood, even if you don't even, you don't check in with your neighbors all the time, but you have the feeling, the connection you want it to happen, you will make a positive energetic connection. It's intentionality. That's the key. Thanks for asking. What else? Yes, please. All right. Yes. In the back, my friend, the green shirt. Yeah, I was just going to ask, what's this the future of Anusara and, and your role with it? The future of Anusara is death. <laughs> <laughs> Everything dies that is born. Isn't it cool? That, you know, uh, one thing is that, and so what you have is, I always think of it as in Muktanad, Baba Muktanada, who's Guru Mai's guru, he always said, you should consider that everything dies. Every day you should think about your death. And you know what happens when you do that? You get a sense of urgency. You get, like, you say, like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Like, I, I do what I do and, and in the organization is to make it as sustainable as possible. You want to have a long run. Like, everything, if you ever see... The books I put out, anything I'll ever do, I can give you my word that it's going to be something for the long run. It's not disposable, okay? So I will have that intention. But I'm no fool to think it's going to last forever. Everything's going to pass. When you know that it's going to pass, you get a little bit more fire under you. You get a little bit more urgency. The way I look at it is right now we're in a really critical time. You know, like, they'll say, aren't you tired? Are you kidding me? Like, I live my, I spent my whole life getting to this place. Like, I just flew in from Italy for this. Like, I want to be here. This is a critical time. We have to come together to make a shift. It is not like, you know, oh, let's just keep practicing, playing around, and, you know, rehearsing. Dress rehearsal's over. You know, so my, the future is like now. You know, it's like, so I look like we, I really, I'm very conscientious, very mindful of living fully that wild life every day. And that way you're going to, you go to sleep with no re regret. You go to sleep and you think that was a good day. And then you die that night, you know. And every day it's the way I live. So Anusara, yeah, we blow it out today. And it, <laughs> it'll die one day and it's totally cool. Everything dies, isn't it fantastic? <laughs> but, but while you have it, you treat it with so much respect and honor. You, your body, you're going to die. You know when it's going to die, you not take care of it. The, the, the way I'll try to run the company and the, and the community is with the highest integrity every single day. Until I die, it may go on beyond me, but who knows, you know? That's the thing. Don't think anything lasts forever. Put a little fire under your butt. Things are, you know, the time's now. So you talk about the future, it's happening. Thanks for, uh, thanks for asking. Thanks, everybody. We have anything? Jeff Krasno. Here he is. I was just talking about you. Well, as John mentioned, he's in the middle of a European tour. And he just took a small pit stop to the west coast of the United States. Uh, it was probably nine hour time just difference for you. And you're up dancing with Moby and, and giving lectures and being such a huge part of this event and this community. And we're so grateful for the for the trip that you've made and to, uh, to be here and for all the inspiration that you've given us. Uh, to create this event. So thank you for being here. And thank you. Come back again. Well, you know, it's so great. And with Caitlin and you and so many of you, you know, you think about, I get inspired. Like when I go Tuesday, I go to Ireland. And I can tell you that when I go to, and I step in and talk to Dublin or I go north into Belfast or any places that, where there's a lot of conflict, I bring everybody's juice. I bring everybody's inspiration. They don't know, like, it's, a lot of those people will never come to California. And this place, honestly, for me, California, and where we all from, we come from all over, 
there is a real power of innovation. There's a power of spirit. You know, what we're doing here, what Jeff's doing, it's cutting edge. And I take that inspiration and I take it into Ireland. Wherever I go, every day, every person I meet, and I'll be meeting farmers and people that they haven't left their area for generations. That's their family's plot. But I take, I take the movement of the highest like edge stuff that's happening in the world right here in California to those places. And you know what? It inspires them to do the simplest thing, the way they garden, the way that they love their family, the way they eat. Everything is inspired. We, we do it together. And they inspire me. Take care of the earth. Do you feel the rock? Do you see how the water's alive? Do you smell the air? These people are really, that's where I get inspired. Then I come back here and I tell you about people that live with the earth, that feel the interconnectedness. That's what I'm really excited about. So it's a sharing. You know, we're, we're on the edge. We're, we're really fortunate to be here. I feel fortunate to be with you all, and I'm going to take it with me wherever I go. So blessings, everybody. Thanks so much.